Good morning, everybody. This is like pure peace and quiet. The park's up at Flanders Moss, and it's a nature reserve. And it's uh, super quiet, there's nobody here. It's about half past eight in the morning. It's super misty. There's a slight drizzle in the air. And I just thought I'd show you Flanders Moss. Now, I will admit, you're probably not going to see much. But it is very, very misty here. But behind me, there's a lookout tower. Go and check this out. Got this amazing platform that you can just see for miles. If it wasn't misty. <laughs> Good morning. There's Robin Archie down there. But yeah, look at that. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Oh, nice sleep. <laughs> oh, I love that too. Oh. But yeah, look at all this around here. I don't know if the camera can pick out the mist in the background. But it's so peaceful and quiet here. Today, I think we're headed off to uh, see the Kelpies, They're the horses. They're near Stirling, I think. Not 100% sure. I'm not very geographical. But yeah, this is pretty cool. Anyway, gonna go back to the van, make myself a nice coffee wake up, do a bit of editing, here he is, <laughs> you alright buddy, you okay? <laughs> Look at him go. You all right? Good morning, mate. You all right? Well, here we are at the Kelpies, and I must admit, I thought they were a little bit bigger than that. Is that the ones? Oh, hang on a minute, sorry. There they are, behind me. It's going to be so cool tonight, they're going to light up, and I can't wait to show you the footage of that. That's going to be epic. Right, let's go a little bit closer.
Well, I'm sitting here and I'm all packed, ready to go. It's been fantastic. It really, really has. I know I'm not like the best YouTuber. I'm certainly far from it, but and I know my editing skills and my video skills aren't exactly great. But I'm okay with that because this is it's just me. It's just me and the way I see things. So it's gonna be a sad emotional goodbye to Rob and Archie. I can't thank them enough for their friendship. I really can't. It's uh it's quite rare when you actually meet someone that you completely 100 percent gel with and it's a shame that you know there aren't more people like him saying that it'd be nice if there was more people like you that give you the love and support and the encouragement to carry on and live this lifestyle i know it's not for everybody i totally get that and the norm is grow up get married, have kids, have a house, have a dog. But for some of us, I suppose that's quite a hard thing to, to explain because in all fairness, I've had that, I have that, but I prefer this lifestyle. And I know it might upset a lot of people thinking, Wow, mate, sort your shit out. But I have tried. I have tried to be the normal person, lead the normal lifestyle. And there are reasons that have put me in this situation that I feel comfortable in. I suppose what I'm trying to say and bring this video to an end and I'll put some, try and put some amazing footage in on the end of this little message, is that you can't explain how things change, they just do, and you have to embrace them and make the best of what you've got. This is the best that I've got, and I'm gonna make best use of it and I'm going to try and enjoy the rest of my life how I see fit for me. I shall make sure that my loved ones are all okay. I'll give them the love and support that they need. I'll always be there for them. But ultimately, without getting too emotional, it's just me in the van. So I need to embrace that. And I need to understand myself, the situations that I get in, or the situations I find myself in, and try and make the best choices that I can. And I suppose what I'm trying to say is that, I don't know what I'm trying to say to be fair, I'm trying to, trying to justify my existence. I think that's what I'm trying to do, trying to justify my existence, where nobody can look down on you, because nobody wants that. Anyway, a bit too deep, but then that's me. I'm just trying to show you who I am and not what others perceive me to be. Thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of the film. You're coming off here. Mate, you're a fucking legend. And I love you and Archie to pieces. I really, really do. Safe travels, mate. Let me know when you get back. I'll let you know when I get back. You take care. There he goes. The 
boo van. Well, four hours, 17 minutes, 300 and something miles. And it's beginning to rain. Hey ho. Right. See you in a bit. Good morning everybody. How are you? Hope you had a, uh, an amazing new year. Uh, I've just put out a video of just pure driving of Scottish roads. And yeah, I was just like, I look back at it. I don't know, to be fair, some of these videos of driving around does get a little bit boring. The music choice is quite important. <clears throat> sometimes the music matches, sometimes it doesn't. So I can only apologise if you don't enjoy the music on that. Anyway, I'll put a link in the description and a card up there. So anyway, I am uh, back at the house uh, this weekend. Basically, the radiators in the house have stopped working and the ex's car needs new discs and pads and they are doing quite a lot of traveling up and down hills so oh, with garage prices and everything i thought i just i'd do that i need to make sure that she is safe and the, the kids are safe in a safe car anyway this weekend i've done a lots of jobs on the van mainly i've taken out the drawer slides in the back because in my head you know you see all these Instagram pictures like yeah big nice slide outs big YouTube channels have them but yeah in all fairness they don't really work in my van not as well as I thought they do anyway so I've taken it out because I've bought myself something and I'll show you later but bought myself this because the little Baofeng radios we've got are okay but if you're in like a convoy of six or seven like we were in Scotland when we were with Rob and uh, Mandy and John I couldn't really hear them very well it's like my van is so insulated it's just the, the signal doesn't get to the van unless you're one or two vans behind so i bought this and i wanted everything on the microphone so the actual control unit or the radio receiver is separate and everything's on the mic so yesterday climbed on a roof fitted an aerial thread the cable through and thread the antenna wire to the front and hopefully that will go above i've just been to going spare my favorite shop and I just put a bit of video footage in now and I will say this shop is absolutely amazing I used to work there years ago part-time and I absolutely loved it Roger and the gang are absolutely amazing their shop is like Aladdin's cave and they've actually just they just moved from their old shop to their new shop which is right next door and if you are local to Littlehampton Bognor or surrounding areas and you're building a van this shop is absolutely super invaluable it's got everything you could even imagine you know like it's just anyway roll vt here we are the new going spare shop this is in wick in little hampton it's just like an aladdin's cave have a look at this one. This is a new shop. I love this place. This is where you need to come for your bits and pieces if you're local. Look at all this, look. All the towing stuff, pipes, silicon pipes. If you want to upgrade your van, bits and pieces. Well, look at the size of them, look. So cool. Every single clamp you can need. u bins pipe work for your heaters and stuff. It's just off the roll everything you could need touch up paints air fresheners oil galore and this is what you need 
individual nuts and bolts that you can buy. Uh, and a full range of tools look. Sealy, Drapier, Hilka, just everything. All these impact sockets. Amazing. I love this place. Hello, <laughs> 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 Rog. Hey, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so I went there and I bought myself some twin core cable. This is obviously for the radio. And also I bought myself some uh, quite thick, it's a bit overkill, but I'd much rather it be overkill than underkill because my heater, water heater that I can switch on from this panel here that runs off of excess solar or the battery uh, it's a dual, it's a dual heating element. So it's two forty volts and twelve volts. And I've wired up the twelve volt side to my Victron seven one two BMV. So when the battery is fully charged, the relay clicks in, heats the water up, it gets to thirteen volts, and it clicks off. Uh, so it doesn't drain the battery, and I've still got loads of power. But I would be like, it would be nice if I could control it from the aux beam <coughs> at the front of the van. So I'm driving and I can just press the aux beam control panel and while I'm driving, it's heating up the water. So it's running off the alternator basically. But to do that, I needed to purchase a blocking diode because also you can't have two sources of power going into one. So I thought in my head when I used to fit Clifford alarms we used to wire up the indicators to the hazards but they would back feed so you fitted a little blocking diode so power would go in but it wouldn't track back out so my idea of thinking of that is if I left this on uh, it would power up and if I left it off as I say, I can just turn it on and it wouldn't backtrack all the way through the 200 amp relay to the 20 amp built-in relay to the 712 BMV. And now I can't remember what, I, oh, here we go. <clears throat> so yeah, this is it. It's just a little blocking diode. It's pre-made, it's like three pounds. So it's just got a terminal on that end, terminal on that end, blocking diode in the middle with a heat shrink crowd. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to piggyback that and I'll push that into the relay. And then, well, this one will go into the relay first. Like, so, so the BMV will go into there and the AUX beam input will go in there. So it can't, tr oh can't track back so a power will go in but it can't go back down it's a one one way valve for electricity so I'm gonna get on and do that anyway so other news I have bought a hundred watt sticky silicone pad because uh I have noticed that you can't buy block heaters from a V6 Sprinter. So, or you can't buy engine preheaters for a V6 Sprinter. Apparently they don't need them, but in extreme temperatures, I want to be able to bring the, at least the oil temperature up. So I'm going to fit this to the sump, and then I'm also going to fit that to the aux beam. 
uh, or I might, in all fairness, just put a cigarette lighter end on this so I can plug it into my Bluetti AC50S that has a power rating of 300 uh, watts and it's only 100 watts so I can at least bring the oil up to temperature for about like 10 20 minutes and that'll bring it up so yeah quite a few little bits and pieces so now I'm going to crack on with it and I shall show you what I bought in the back of the van to be 100% completely self-sufficient and I'm so happy with this another reason I had to come home is because I needed to do a lot of washing and that ties in with what I've put in the back so anyway I'm gonna crack on and do this and I'll come back to you right I'm going to show you the back end of the van. So I've just filled up with diesel. Fill up. I just normally fit up the tank at Tesco's and I'll fill up with jerry can and I'll just put this pipe in. There's a little pump on the back. Up there. And this is my garage. Got all my Victron stuff, my inverter, my washing machine and spin dryer and tumble dryer. It's only 850 watts, so it runs off the uh, inverter perfect. Water tank, leveling, and in that bag there is my pipe that goes from fresh water tank, which just plugs into there. I've put this little valve on. So I can just bleed off a bit of air so it doesn't, you know, when you pump it in, it doesn't go, bleh, it expands. And then normally just crack that little bit off there, like that. I've still got my paddle board in and I've had to drill some holes underneath my bed because I've noticed when I did my bed in the other day, there was a bit of dampness. Never happened before. I've had this van two years now and since I painted underneath so it's on you know on top I think the paint's not allowing it to breathe so yeah I've had to drill some holes anyway bloody cold out here let's go back inside <laughs> 